So maybe we can start in, yeah, around uh, three minutes. So we can uh, wait for a bit for others to join. Okay, so let's start. Um, yeah, so uh, good afternoon to all of you. Well, good morning for probably for uh, some of us. Um, greetings, so happy Earth Day. I'm uh, Jed Alegado, Senior Communications Officer for uh, Breakthrough from Plastic Asia Pacific. Um, yeah, so we're in our third uh, Gaia BFFP deep dive session with journalists. And today, since it's Earth Day and we're also launching Classic Atlas Asia, we're on a special edition for this uh, deep dive uh, conversation. So, and also, would like to take the opportunity, of course, to uh, tackle one of our you know, uh, challenges nowadays, which is the still, you no, know, the COVID-19 pandemic. Definitely, it's uh, Im impacts on uh, single-use plastics production and consumption. So welcome to our friends in the media here. Um, I'm seeing some uh, names in our participants list, you know, journalists from Bangladesh, from the Philippines, um, and other parts of um, Southeast Asia as well. Um, yeah. So just to uh, give you a brief introduction, Plastic Atlas, we're launching today Plastic Atlas Asia, which is the, the you know, the, of course, the, the regional edition of the Plastic Atlas International Edition, uh, originally published in, in November 2019 by, by the Heinrich Wall Foundation uh, and Break Free from Plastic. For the Asia edition, uh, we also partnered with the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies based in uh, Tokyo, Japan, for this uh, uh, publication, which really uh, tries you know, to, to encapsulate the you know, state of uh, the plastic pollution crisis here in the region with 55, I think, infographics uh, covering different uh, topics like health, gender, uh, water, um, tourism, etc. And of course, uh, 
uh, we devoted a special chapter on COVID-19 and classics, which I actually uh, authored. Um, yeah, so today, we'd like to welcome our speakers. We have Kevin Lee, uh, Program Manager of Heinrich Wall Foundation, a Hong Kong office. Um, he's one of the executive editors of this publication. We have Dr. Prem Prema Kumara Jagat Dikela. You can call him Kumara. He's a senior researcher and deputy director of IGF, which is a, uh, one of uh, the publishers of this publication. We have Miko Alinio, Gaia's Asia Pacific program manager, who actually authored two chapters in this uh, classic atlas. We have Siddika Sultana, executive director of environmental and social development organization based in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Yeah, which uh, Esdo is one of our members you know, uh, uh, in BFSP and in Gaia. And they're actually one of those who uh, did a, an audit on uh, waste uh, consumption during, at, at the start of the lockdowns during the pandemic uh, uh, last year. You know? Uh, when lockdowns were first uh, implemented. Yeah, so yeah, so just to before we go to the directly into the QA, we'd like to call on Kevin Lee from, uh, from the Heinrich Ball Foundation Hong Kong office just to give us a bit of a background about um, the Plastic Atlas Asia and what you know can you see there in the publication. It's actually now available uh, online. So Kevin will, you know, uh, give us the link later. Okay, so thanks, Jet, uh, for the introduction. Um, should I uh, use the PowerPoint, uh, share my PowerPoint? Uh, yeah, I think Julian will, will share uh, his, all right. uh, his screen, yeah. Okay. Okay, so while we are waiting, um, yeah, probably let me introduce a bit uh, Henry Ball Foundation and why we have this plastic at uh, least Asia and I will quickly go through because I, I noticed we only I only have seven minutes to talk about this. So I will actually quickly go through the, um, the, all the kind, all kinds of background. So basically Henry Ball Foundation uh, is a nonprofit green think tank uh, from Germany. Uh, which has actually more than 30 offices worldwide. Um, Hong Kong office, my office is actually one of the global offices host uh, uh, the Asia um, Global Dialogue Program. So it basically seeks to promote engagement between Europe and Asia on developing and transform transformative trends in Asia. So for Plastic Athletes Asia, uh, we actually think that, oh, so you are, okay, sorry. Um, because I, I don't see the slide, sorry, Julian. So I, can I, ah, okay, thank you so much. Okay. So, um, so actually we think that uh, Atlas, the format of Atlas is actually a good format to demonstrate the data information in a simple and accessible way through graphics and maps to illustrate a broad range of global issues. Asia edition actually highlights the role of Asia in its part of the global, this global issue and how actually Asia uh, is, can, can participate to solve this crisis. Um, so um, probably like um, for, plastic, for plastic itself, actually plastic, um, as you may be aware, it actually has become an alternative word for single use disposable materials. But do you know how big um, that actually the impact of plastic are creating to our environments? Indeed, it's actually in our daily life, all kinds of plastic items are very short life. Um, only from, as you can see from only half a year to at most 35 years. And uh, next. And a large proportion of plastics actually only used for packaging and followed by a number of other uh, uh, purposes, as you can see, clothing, building, transportation, electrical and electronic devices. Particularly Asia, we think that Asia actually has a big role and responsibility in plastic crisis. 
Um, next. Actually, annual global plastic production has reached nearly 370 million tons with Asia now accounting for, for more than half, actually more than 50% of, uh, of production. Next. Meanwhile, Hong Kong SAR and South Korea actually among the world's highest plastic waste producers per capita every year. And other parts of Asia, such as Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, actually catching up. Next. <clears throat> so let's say use Thailand or and Malaysia as an example. As you can see from the graph, plastic consumption per capita is already at the same level as in Canada, Spain, France, whose actually GDP capita are actually much higher than these two countries. If the rest of Asia continues to follow the same pattern or pathway of consumption, the world will be in a large crisis. Next. So um, in Asia, you can see the impact is already very significant. 15 of the top 20 plastic polluted rivers in the world are located in Asia. Next, even worse, Southeast Asia has become the main region that receives significantly high proportion of plastic waste from Europe, USA, and Japan. And Hong Kong SL has become an important role in transferring these plastic waste from Europe and Japan to Southeast Asia. Next. Um, so as you can see, actually, um, the developing Asia needs a better way to deal with the plastic crisis. It is also time for us to rethink um, the ways the plastic is consumed and wasted. And at the same time, um, COVID-19 actually um, has increased the use of uh, uh, single-use plastic. Um, you, you can see this, uh, this graph actually while the carbon emission, actually a lot of carbon emission actually comes from the plastic production. Uh, 10 to 13%, as you can see, plastic is a product of oil industry. Next. And particularly while carbon emission you might feel that carbon emission might have been uh, slightly slower while the, you know, a lot of uh, human activities has been suspended. But at the same time, with the declining oil pr price in the past year, the production cost of new plastic is also decreased. It makes plastic re recycling less re attractive. And as the, as the cost of difference between the recycle and new plastic becomes much bigger, as, I, as, you, as you can see, it, the, la, the, the gap between the recycled plastic and the uh, new plastic, the cost actually has a, even as high as 93% difference. In other words, falling oil prices make new plastic cheaper than recycled uh, plastic. Um, next. So um, in general, plastic actually, plastic production actually and product pollution has actually a lot of impact on human beings. Um, it actually has entered our food cycle. Uh, next, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, maybe there's something missing. Um, anyway, yeah, I, let, me, let me say a bit. Yeah, so basically it has entered our food cycle from the land and sea to vegetable and fish through to our food products sold in market and end up in our body. It, resu it results in a whole range of diseases, cancer, diabetes, mental disorder, obesity, and even infertility. Women are more vulnerable actually to health hazards of, from the plastic exposure, from pack, pl plastic packaging, cosmetics, sanitary packs, clothes, and even work as waste packers. Um, next. Um, so, but, even that said, the good news is that, is that people in Asia have started initiatives in their community to tackle the crisis. These cities and communities have set their targets to refuse and reduce the use of single-use plastic. So all in all, uh, we think that um, Asia actually, even though um, is an uh, important region and a very significant region for plastic, uh, production and pollution. But at the same time, um, Asian people have a lot of things to, to do to on um, plastic crisis. 
So, um, so to wrap up, I think uh, I would like to encourage you, all of you to have a look at the book, Plastic Atlas Asia Edition. Uh, as, as you can see that the, the link from the chat box and you have a look to download the, um, the, the plastic atlas. So I think uh, just to quickly wrap up, you can, you can have a look at the, at the publication and actually raise the question. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you, Kevin, uh, for that. Uh, yeah, so probably now we can uh, op we can uh, go directly to the Q and A. So I'll we'll start with some um, questions here. Yeah, let's talk about let's dig deeper here to the issue of plastic pollution during uh, this ongoing pandemic. How bad is it? You know, in in uh, the cities and countries in, in Asia. Are there any data that really show an increase in single-use plastics due to lockdowns imposed, uh, et cetera? Okay, anyone from the, from the panel can answer. Hello. Yes, Sidika. Yeah. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So what we have seen, uh, the uh, plastic atlas. So it's a really a big crisis for for the global. Uh, it's not only the country, because it's, uh, we know the uh, pollution is traveling. So. We don't think in, in our country's crisis, and this is the Philippines crisis, this is the Indian crisis, and the, also the Japan's crisis. It's, it's a traveling. So it's a, it's a, we, we have to think about immediately. It's a, it would be a pandemic. I think so. You know, uh, the last year, ISDO did a study. Uh, it was uh, started in March, uh, March 25th. And one only the one month we did a study uh, through the um, uh, a way of uh, we we used um, telephonic conversation and we also did the survey through the questionnaire, this online questionnaire, and also some uh, um, data, physical data we collect that time also. So it, it was only the one month study. So it's a scenario is really. Uh, havoc, you know. That time we seen the uh, fourteen. Uh, only the one month is uh, already uh, COVID. Um, the single use plastics and waste is hazardous waste plastics are generated. That time is fourteen thousand five hundred above tons. So it is really. Uh, it's all our hazardous plastics. That time, uh, you know, the Bangladesh um, uh, already banned the plastic back in 22, uh, 2002. But that time, plastic bag also uses increasingly uh, within this uh, time, uh, face mask, plastic face mask and gloves and uh, sanitize, sanitizing the container uh, and other things also increasingly. So uh, it was, it was uh, conducted in the whole Bangladesh, the country, but only the one month we, we saw the amount is 14,500 uh, above tons plastic waste generated at that time. It's all a single use. It's not, would not be degradable. So, how do you manage? It's a problem is that the Asian people, Asian countries, especially in South Asia, I talk about that, we don't have enough management system. 
So it is really a, a problematic situation for us. And uh, also we did a study, uh, one study, it was especially on single-use plastic. Uh, yearly Bangladesh has generated the only single-use plastic is 80,000, 87,000 tons per year. It was a last year survey. Uh, we already started the follow-up survey. Hopefully uh, in next June, uh, we'll just publish our follow-up survey. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sidika. Yeah, I think from based from the chapter on, on the pandemic in, in Plastic Atlas, uh, um, it says here, um, 14,165 tons of uh, plastic waste generated in, in Bangladesh no? within the, the same period during the initial uh, months of, of the lockdown. What about in other uh, cities or countries in, in Asia? Uh, Miko yeah, yeah, or yes, Kumara? Kumara? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, first of all, thank you for inviting us to join this uh, yeah, webinar and also Congratulate for the Henrich Ball Stephen. The, we we have uh, like uh, came to this end of this process and making this uh, publication uh, to the uh, world. So I, I think for IGS, especially my team in the CCP uh, IGS uh, UNEP Collaboration Center, is really happy to be part of this process. So I I think I want to show like a tell two things. One is uh, the even though the plastic atlas uh, shown that the data, the huge issue of plastic, but at the same time, there were two, two uh, reports uh, worldwide uh, show us, it is, it is part of this process. First one is the World Bank report in 2018, so us that the waste generation in the Southeast Asia and the South Asia is going to be double in, in the next uh, five, 10 years. So that is not in this report, but uh, this, this show us that the definitely plastic going to be double when we are going to double the waste generation. And the recently also uh, ESCAP has, uh, has uh, produced uh, the, the achievement of the SDGs in South uh, like uh, Asia, it's so especially uh, SCP, uh, Sustainable Consumption and Production, it's a uh, goal 12 and the climate change, these goals are going uh, 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 backwards. So we are in, a, in a Asia is in a very uh, huge issue in, in achieving these goals. So in that sense, I, I think the, the, the plastic uh, issue is very important for us here. And this report going to be a very important report uh, for giving a kind of a eye opener. Like uh, I feel it is more, more not only the data and some kind of a, a real uh, actions and the, and the, and the figures uh, to the audience. So in that sense, I think that way. Then it's come to the, the single use plastic and the COVID-19, yes, uh, this, uh, data have different in the depend on the countries. Uh, so what we see is uh, definitely there is an increase in the uh, single use plastic, but at the same time, in general, municipal waste management, some cities we saw data it's getting lower because of their waste generation, but uh, increase in the healthcare waste uh, kind of um, uh, the, the waste where the cities cannot handle themselves uh, in, in this uh, endemic situation. So of course, single-use plastic is one of the main uh, issues that the most of uh, what our studies also saw, yeah, we're doing some studies in Indonesia, uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, and all these cities, we found that the, the, the generation of the single-use plastic has increased uh, quite a big amount of uh, uh, volume uh, because of the single-use plastic. Thanks. Uh, thank you, um, Kamara. Um, yeah, so we talk about um, con um, consumption. What about investments of um, the oil and gas uh, industry 
the oil and gas industry in terms of you know really producing more plastics because with the pandemic um halting oil consumption of because of travel bans etc um are these companies you know really uh, taking advantage of the situation by building more plastics uh, building are uh, producing more plastics Miko, Kevin, or yeah. Yeah, well, from actually from what uh, we have gathered, uh, basically um, during the COVID, and actually it's actually from a Reuters report. And mm -hmm. it basically says um, the oil industry, uh, while they uh, actually, you know, they, they make a pledge that saying that they will spend two uh, billion um, on the uh, U.S. dollars on the on the on the reducing their uh, plastic waste, but at the same time, they actually foresee that there will be a lot more plastic has to be new plastic has to be produced uh, because of the pandemic. So they actually will spend four hundred billion U.S. dollars to build new plants for the new plastics. So actually, two hundred times. So. And at the same time, as I actually pointed out that the oil price actually has dropped. So, so in the end, the, the, the gap between the, the, I mean, the price gap between the recycled plastic and also the new plastic has become bigger, actually. I mean, the gap, that means that it is less attractive for the people who, who to, use the, to use the recycled plastic. So these are the actually external factors that, um, uh, people and uh, you know the companies, less incentives for companies to use recycled plastics. So, what 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 can we do basically? Um, actually, in that sense, I think it is also important put, to point out. I mean, the, the the investment actually the company's investment in plastic reduction is so little actually. Um, while while they can force, they can predict a mass massive investment in new plastics, so actually this is one of the thing that we should we should address to the corporations that oh see look look at the look at the at the your investment between the recycle recycle plastic and also the new plastic and how actually we could remedy the situation. This is probably one thing that we should point it out to to the to the oil industry and also the companies, yeah. And actually, I think um, um, just um, uh, Kumara actually also pointed out some one thing. I think I think re relating to COVID nineteen, actually, I would like to I would like to draw to the two points. One is actually the pushback of the plastic bank in many Asian countries. Originally, before the COVID, there are already a number of countries, East and Southeast Asia, even South Asia country, they've made a pledge to saying that, oh, we won't, we, we will stop, we will ban the single-use plastic, single-use plastic bags, straw, straws, and whatever, single-use plastics. But suddenly, actually, because of the pandemic, everyone, everything has to be resumed. This is one thing. I think we have to pay attention to the pledges whether the government re are willing to, to shoulder the responsibility to push further rather than, oh, because of the pandemic, we have to stop the ban. I, I, think, I think this is the one thing that we should push, push the government. And it's at, a, at the same time, the recycling activities has also been stored because of the COVID-19. So um, I, think, I think it is actually, if we, if we don't have governments push, we don't have government support. I think, I think it is difficult for the ordinary people to push for recycling industry, to push for you know, the kind of regulations, enforcements of, on plus single-use plastic. These kind of things actually we need the government support. But otherwise, actually, the, even our single individuals can, can hardly do anything about this. I think this is the thing that we, we, are, we, sh we should address during the COVID-19. Thank you, Kevin. So you, you mentioned um, um, uh, something on, you know, of course, the recycling, the plastic bans, you know, the, the state of these um, 
um, somehow solutions um, with regards to the ongoing pandemic. There's a more practical, uh, I think, question from Tara Mundo of ABS-CBN News uh, in Manila. Uh, she's asking, may I ask the panelists, what is their take on the view that SUPs or single-use plastics like face masks, PPEs are essential at the time of this pandemic? What could be the viable alternatives to these protective materials? Thank you. Uh, so maybe we can hear from Miko of uh, Gaia Asia Pacific. Yeah, uh, thanks, Jed, and thanks, Tara, for the question. Um, regarding the uh, use of um, SUPs in essential materials like PPEs, uh, it's, uh, I guess, very difficult to uh, look for alternatives, especially in the medical setting. But for maybe ordinary people, citizens uh, that are not into healthcare um, uh, professions or settings, uh, they're a lot of alternatives uh, such as washable or usable masks and PPEs that we can use. Um, um, and even in, in uh, businesses, uh, they don't have to um, resort to using uh, disposables. Uh, there have been uh, studies already. Uh, there's a um, statement from the scientific community saying that um, it's safe to use reusables as long as um, these uh, businesses practice uh, sanitation protocols. Um, for uh, for us, I guess um, we should um, promote the use of um, washable or reusable uh, PPEs when we can. And um, for healthcare settings, I understand while uh, there's a need to use um, medical grade or uh, disposable PPEs um, in in or hospitals or um, healthcare administrators, they also have to consider um, disposal options that are not harmful to uh, human health or the environment. So there are also um, non-burn disposal options such as autoclaving or sterilization. So at least we can uh, dispose these uh, PPEs uh, safely without um, uh, doing harm to uh, our environment or in disposal sites. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, uh, Miko. I, I I, yes, yes, Sidika. I, I want to add some, yes. Uh, first thing, we can also raise the awareness. Awareness is most important also here uh, because the um, PPE and uh, the surgical marks is not for the general people, it's for the, especially for the doctors. But we have seen the uh, pupils are also wearing the PPE mask and other things also, which our doctors are using uh, regularly. So it's also need to awareness, more ever uh, to wash your hand than others and also go for alternatives. And uh, I have seen uh, one data, uh, so Bangladesh, uh, this is the biomedical waste. Uh, one report has uh, came, the biomedical waste has become a new threat to public health and the environment because of now the 206 tons of medical waste is generated every day in Dhaka city. Uh, yes, Alan, due to the COVID situation, every day. So it's also, we can think about it all. Uh, awareness first, awareness most important things here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Sidika. Um, there's uh, actually a chapter um, on waste picking you know, in, in Plastic Atlas Asia. So I'm, so I'm wondering now, um, of course, we, we know how valuable they are, the essential role they play, and but despite this of probably in Asia, they're underpaid and undervalued, no? as is uh, aptly titled in the chapter on waste speaking. Um, what about the impacts of um, the pandemic and the lockdowns to the welfare of waste speakers? Um, what are uh, the messages that you probably would like to, to send to governments and yeah, decision makers? I can take on that, Jed, and then maybe mm. the other panelists can add. 
So, yeah, I mean, we've, uh, in a way, at least we're seeing a lot of uh, local governments or cities that, uh, in a way, slowly recognizing that um, waste workers or waste pickers are part of the um, essential uh, workforce, um, along with um, those working in the healthcare sector, um, since they also provide uh, services, even though um, uh, most of us are staying uh, at home. Uh, they still provide that uh, service to uh, collect our waste, uh, process them uh, if necessary, and so on. And uh, I think there are some uh, local governments that uh, in a way provided some support through um, some emergency assistance. Uh, we've also documented some members of uh, the Break Free from Plastic providing some food aid or relief uh, to these um, people. Um, there are also uh, cities that also provided some uh, form of hazard pay to at least recognize uh, the risk that they're taking uh, during this pandemic. And as uh, cities are in a way rolling out um, vaccines and other support for, um, for its citizens, uh, I guess the call for um, of um, the movement is to um, also consider uh, waste workers as part of the priority list for uh, the vaccine rollouts. Um, we've seen uh, several campaigns, especially in India and the Philippines, where um, some uh, Break Free from Plastic members are, um, in a way, calling on their go respective governments to um, also provide the same uh, support in terms of uh, vaccines for uh, these workers. Yeah. Um, thank you, Miko. Yeah. Um, for our um, journalist uh, friends who are here, feel free to, you know, drop in your questions in the chat box. There's another question from Tara as well. Uh, wondering if there's a figure for the Philippines on biomedical waste, the impact of masks and PPEs to this. Miko, do you have uh, knowledge on, on data? On yeah, I was actually thinking if uh, if uh, one of our colleagues from Healthcare Without Harm already has information about this, I can't recall if uh, they were already provided. I think for now, we're, we're still using um, uh, data way back in uh, early 2020. Uh, it was, um, I think, estimates from, uh, from the Asian Development Bank using um, uh, actual numbers from uh, Wuhan, China. And um, I think based on that um, April 2020 briefing, uh, ADB estimated that um, healthcare waste would um, quadruple in, in selected cities in, in Southeast Asia, including Manila. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Miko. Um, yeah, in terms of, um, in the, in the plastic atlas, we've seen, you know, different, um, impacts of, uh, of, uh, plastics, you know, in the tourism, food, uh, also the link to climate change, you know, the, the throw, throwaway culture, you know, the, the production and consumption data here in, in, here in Asia, the gender aspects, which, uh, Kevin mentioned um, in his presentation as, as well. Uh, yeah, but so amidst all the, this, the, the problems associated with plastics in terms of the different industries and you know, our live, lives, um, so what is, you know, what is the solution? Is recycling um, the, the solution to this uh, crisis? And uh, what about regulations in terms of, you know, regional or sub-regional uh, regulations at the ASEAN, SARKI. Yeah, so, yeah. What, um, what kind of policies do we need to, to push uh, uh, for governments to, to enact and implement? Um, uh, Komara, do you have... Um, 
Yes, uh, I think it's, it's uh, because actually I contributed this plastic atlas, uh, the chapter called Zero Waste uh, Cities. Actually, uh, that's uh, I, I also learned a lot uh, from writing this chapter because uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, very good initiatives has been taken from our cities, uh, especially leaders of city leaders in partnership with the private sector and the communities uh, to tackle this plastic issue. What we learned that there is, there were not like a single solution for that, but uh, they use some kind of a different options. Like you mentioned, as they, they have some policies and they have some kind of awareness program. They have uh, adapted some kind of uh, uh, activities uh, to uh, apply these uh, three R principles. So that kind of a combination of uh, activities works well rather than looking at uh, individual uh, uh, subject uh, separately. So uh, in, in that sense, I, I feel uh, it should be started uh, from the understanding their plastic uh, based uh, issue in the in the in the cities so that's one also we found like a very good uh, cases uh, they, they can look at them in the brand audit uh, studies that the uh, miko and, the, and their teams and your teams are doing so and also some of our experience we work with the, some cities by igs in in developing some uh, uh, tools to understand the plastic waste uh, pollution and the leakage uh, to the uh, water system. So understanding the situation is the first thing. And then working with the uh, partners like uh, communities and the, and the other partners, business uh, and uh, uh, universities to develop their local actions. That's what we learn, like uh, most of uh, the zero waste cities and they develop uh, uh, action plans to achieve zero plastic uh, uh, solutions uh, based, on to, based on their own uh, situation. So uh, another one we found the, their work is not much uh, uh, centralized bigger infrastructure projects. These are they are more focused on the on the decentralized work. So I found that is also very important in especially this kind of a COVID kind of a situation, pandemic situation, because we we saw everywhere this centralized system failed. So it's, it's uh, the, but the decentralized system where the local leave, the people handling their waste management are, are still functioning because uh, in the early uh, discussions, we, I, I heard that uh, we are thinking how uh, uh, that the single use plastic banning policies have reversed uh, by the governments in this COVID situation. But last month, uh, uh, Gaia and, and IGS uh, had the kind of a, a workshop with uh, in the SCAP uh, uh, Asia Pacific Forum, inviting uh, Bandung and uh, San Fernando. We found like a San Fernando city is still continuing their single-use plastic ban uh, policy because for them it is easy to handle uh, because they are working with their their communities and the decentralized systems and they they keeping their policies to apply, even though within this kind of COVID uh, situation. So. I, I feel uh, that kind of a, uh, like a uh, integrated uh, uh, system or approach uh, should be taken by the cities based on their own situations. Thank you. Thank you, um, Komara. Um, yeah, um, Kevin, do you want to add anything? Yeah, thank you, Jed. Um, I think uh, as a long-term solution, actually that, as, as Kumar already mentioned, I think we actually have a mix of different approaches to address the issue. Yeah, um, and there's no single way, even talking about recycling, definitely recycling is a, 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 an approach to mitigate, to mitigate the crisis, but not necessarily really addressing the issue um, because recycling doesn't really mean that people can, can can stop using the plastic. Actually, they, just, they can still consume more plastic for recycling. So um, I, well, I think even worse, even the corporations actually might still push for re recycling as ultimate solution, but not really reducing the production of or the use of single use plastic in their products. 
So, um, so I think this is very important to note that, um, yeah, that we meet, we need, we need a really ultimate solution. You know, uh, a mix of approaches to to address the issue, including reduction, encourage people to reduce the use of single-use plastic or even eliminate. And there are a number, of course, the in zero ways as in, in as you can see in the chapter, uh, zero ways chapter actually. We have a uh, zero waste hierarchy. I think this is a very uh, basic uh, map, uh, diagram. Actually, you can see very basically you, you have, we have to start everything from reduce, refuse, and redesign. And then we, we ask ourselves why, whether we can reuse and then follow by the others. So, um, so I think it is. Um, uh, very important to whether, whether we can adopt this kind of logic in our uh, waste management systems, particularly for our governments, to, for the corporations to really look into that, to address the issues um, yeah, from, from, the, from the very beginning. So yeah, that's my point. Yeah, yeah, I think definitely, um, you know, um, a mix of um, different solutions, but ultimately about really halting, um, stopping the production of new plastics, uh, you know, zero waste uh, approach of a resource management system, government regulations, bans, um, extended producers responsibility, and, and hopefully you know, corporations will be more aggressive in, um, uh, in really uh, introducing alternative delivery systems like refill and reuse systems. Like I think in one of the chapters in the Atlas, there's really a uh, um, an insight there where you know there's really the culture of the thingy culture or micro retail culture is actually uh, you know uh, prevalent used to be prevalent in in Asia and in some parts of Asia, but of course it has somehow hijacked by the uh, sachets and, you know, really uh, single-use plastics in, in the long run. Um, yeah, so any, uh, thing, any questions from the media? You can actually unmute yourselves and, you know, you can feel free to ask questions or you can type in the chat box. Um, yeah, from, there's also a question from Marit Kabugon from the Philippines. The shift caused by lockdowns and fear of going out to more online shop, shopping and home deliveries has also increased use of single-use packaging, utensils and containers. Any thoughts on how much this has contributed to plastic pollution? Fidika or Miko or okay yes it is uh, we are now we are in the virtual uh, system so we ordered within this pandemic and the lockdown situation in everywhere so we already purchased from the uh, internet and uh, this way so it's also uh, uh, another threat to consume the um, food packaging and the new plastic sources, plastic waste sources. So we have to think about it. Uh, you know, the, before that, uh, we, I, I just want to say our recommendation, it should be ban the single use, single use plastics. Uh, every, every country, it should follow this. And also um, we, promote the commercial uh, manufacturing of uh, compostable biodegradable alternatives. So we should promote that. And also we had uh, just asked to the, our all governments and uh, to the community, we work together because uh, integrated approach and integrated uh, and coordination with the all ministries and the city corporation and the local government, uh, it, and also the health uh, sectors, and also 
uh, the people. If it is not the integrated approach and not the uh, understandable uh, communication, understandable uh, way uh, to, uh, uh, to raise the awareness, it should not stop. Uh, it would be the increasing, plastic waste would be the increasing. And uh, yeah, first thing is that, and uh, right. of course we have to finish it. We have to take this one we have to take this initiative to ban the single-use plastic. Yeah. Thank you, Sidika. There's a question from um, uh, Yamut uh, Sochi Chaya. Um, I would like to know one or two good examples where local communities handle the plastic waste solution that Mr. Pri Makumara mentioned. I think. Um, uh, the question is referring to you know zero waste communities um, in in Asia. Uh, so we have it. We have actually a full blown chapter on zero waste, uh, focusing on you know uh, these efforts in Asia. Probably Miko can uh, the best person to to answer. Yeah, thanks, Jed. And I think the chapter on zero waste it was written by uh, Kumara. But yeah, um, the Bandung in Indonesia and San Fernando in the Philippines are just two examples. Um, I believe we, I've uh, read maybe more than 10 uh, cities um, and provinces that are already doing it in the region. Um, most of them are focusing on source separation. So it's uh, actually fixing the collection system, making sure that uh, uh, wet waste is separated from dry waste. Uh, so we can process or handle um, wet waste uh, through um, composting. And that make, that ensures um, better value for um, recyclables um, that are in a way less contaminated, that they can be sold in waste uh, bags or um, scrap shops at a higher price. But uh, I guess the main challenge for this um, uh, for this approach or these models is uh, even though we they try to implement um, waste sorting or composting and other uh, waste minimization uh, programs, uh, there's still a significant fraction, mostly uh, residual plastic packaging that are uh, left in the waste stream. And it's, uh, I guess, a, a call for governments and um, and corporations also to uh, look at uh, ways to uh, redesign packaging so that um, cities or um, communities no longer have to deal with um, problematic waste streams uh, on their end. Um, yeah, I think they have covered that. And uh, if you need more information about it, you can take a look at the uh, zero waste chapter in uh, Plastic yeah, thank you, Miko. Uh, I, yeah, I want Sindika. to share something. Yes, um, ISDO already uh, introduced uh, in uh, Bangladesh, in Dhaka city, and especially the other, other two cities and one village, the zero waste community. So uh, we already uh, gained more knowledge over there when we started here. So we basically uh, um, just stable on four strategies. It should be one is the refuse and one is the reduce recycle. So refuse first. When we think when we just say we are not manage this type of things, why do we mm. produce? Hello? So change our behavior. We don't use the single use things. So we just uh, <laughs> went to the uh, this this way and uh, these practices. And after that, uh, we are promoting the zero waste community. We already uh, consult with the community people and we already consult with the waste pickers and we are planning to do uh, training for the waste pickers. We already uh, just uh, organized the 60 waste pickers who would be the model for this the zero waste community waste pickers. And we already, uh, <clears throat> work with the city corporation uh, through this, uh, apply this, uh, this model and government 
maybe government will replicate the after the successful of this project maybe government will replicate this uh, zero waste model in the hopefully in whole bangladesh just share yeah. with this thank yeah. you thank you yeah thank you i, I mean despite you know the the problem also the ongoing uh, pandemic now and the impacts on SUP single use plastics i feel that you know there's still pockets of hope you now in this uh, zero waste community it's really trying to you know um really uh tackle uh, the, the problem at source um probably there is uh last question from doris Lim, still on the uh uh covid19 and plastics um, I find that when we order food, the restaurants are giving out small, pa small packets of sauces like ketchup, etc. Due to the no increases even more plastics in the system. Her question is, how can we overcome these? How can we resist this? Yeah, I, I mean, I remember, I think last year, you know, when, when the, the start at the start of the lockdown, Starbucks has stopped uh, you know, the policy on you know, bring your own um, reusable uh, cup or, you know, uh, gas for coffee, for coffees. They do not allow that. So, like, how can we as individuals, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, I can go quickly. So, yes, um, Nico. actually, if for uh, some of us, uh, or at least some of the um, delivery or e-commerce apps we're using, uh, some of them have already uh, added some of these um, uh, options where you can uh, opt out of um, cutleries or um, condiment packets. And um, I, I guess a consumer, you can also um, make sure you communicate this with the your uh, delivery rider uh, that's uh, doing your order for you just to make sure that uh, um, you try to minimize this packaging. Um, but there are also other options. I believe there are some uh, guidelines that uh, in a way um, provide some uh, information for uh, business owners or restaurants that are planning to in a way reopen uh, during this pandemic. So without uh, relying on um, the use of disposables. So I think um, with proper hygiene and sanitation protocols, um, restaurants or uh, food businesses can still opt to uh, use uh, um, dispensers or um, other um, materials that uh, can do away with uh, um, take out uh, packets. So as long as they're washing hands, um, practicing good hygiene, we, we, can't, uh, we can minimize the risk of uh, the COVID-19 uh, virus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, um, Nico. So um, yeah, definitely um, there's still you know, a way forward, you know, despite the probably the somehow the hard fought, uh, fought gains in terms of uh, really stopping the deluge of uh, plastic pollution in the region. We still can do something individually and collectively. For example, in, in the Philippines, uh, groups uh, are, you know, um, members of Break Free from Plastic are also campaigning for e-commerce applications like Shopee and uh, Lazada to really reduce the, the packaging you know in terms of the the e-commerce you no know, uh because definitely uh we have uh increased sales in terms of uh, increased uh sales and uh deliveries as well from these um uh, e-commerce applications so like alib uh shopee lazada etc and also others in the region uh yeah um so with that I uh, would like to thank everyone who, who joined us for today's uh, Earth Day uh, deep dive session on Plastic Atlas and also COVID-19 on single-use plastics uh, uh, impacts. I uh, would like to thank uh, our panelists, Miko, Kevin, um, Kumara, and Sidika, uh, our journalist friends who joined us. Feel free to reach out to our panelists to Gaia, Esdo, 
uh, Heinrich Ball, big from Classic, and also I just you know if you still have um further questions or if you would like to pursue stories, um, you can see here the link to the Plastic Atlas Asia edition. There's also Heinrich Ball together with Sustainable Asia also produced a six episode, you know, uh, well, including the trailer, you know, podcast on mapping the plastics crisis in, in Asia. You know? So I think the episode one uh, went uh, up to today, you know, in Spotify and other channels. Yeah. So you have uh, break free change makers there like Von Hernandez, Miko, uh, Lakshmi Narayan, Sachirupa Shakar, and others who were, were interviewed uh, in the, and also Homara you know, were interviewed in the podcast uh, series. Okay. So again, thank you very much. Um, with, with, we'll send you the, the international press release that we have drafted. And feel free to reach out to me and to Sonia, uh, the comps officer of Gaia AP, and to Julian as well. Uh, yeah, for other stories that we'd like to pursue. Good afternoon and uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks to the panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Good luck, Kevin, on the <laughs> lunch later. Yeah, yeah tonight. <laughs> Yeah.